to a person of such talent and generosity in just a few words. Cozy, I think, was one of those people who never had a moment's doubt about what he was and what he wanted to be. He was a drummer through and through. There was never any question. Um, he never knew his real mum and dad, and so perhaps he made his own role model. He grew up listening to um, everything that there was in those days. You know, there, there wasn't rock and roll when we were young. It was just sort of starting to be born. So Cozy, like me, would listen to everything, including a lot of jazz. And he named his, he took his name Cozy from uh, one of his heroes in the jazz world. Um, but he knew inside his head very, very early on what kind of drumming he wanted to create, which was very different. Now, I'm a guitarist, you know, so I have a different point of view. You might get a different story from a drummer. But the first thing a guitarist needs on the stage, the first thing he relates to and locks into is the drums. So in a sense, I have a very good kind of perspective on what a drummer is. Um, a lot of young musicians will quote us as, as references, you know, as influences these days. But our influences were really from a generation just before us. That actually, they were about the same age as us, but um, they got into it quicker than, than we did. Um, so I know Roger, you know, my friend Roger in Queen, would endorse me saying that hard rock drumming wasn't actually defined by those first guys in rock and roll. If you listen to Elvis records or, um, you know, rock around the clock or whatever, the drumming is actually quite light. It's still kind of jazz based and the drummers hold their sticks very lightly and it's all in the wrists. What happened with Cozy and his generation was they created a new way of drumming which was completely bodily. It was completely all out loud, hitting it with your whole passionate soul. And I would say, and I think Roger would say, that, that this genre was created by just a few people, probably Carmine Apice, uh, probably John Bonham, and Cozy Powell. You know, there are others, and I don't want to put anyone down, but those three come to mind for me. And Cozy was right up there, you know, he was a hero for me, a hero for Rog, and um, he also, thankfully, kind of became a brother to us. First time I met Cozy was backstage in 1976, uh, when we were playing Hyde Park. And um, I think Roger had invited him along. And he surprised me by saying that I was one of the people that he would really like to work with. And, uh, you know, you never know quite what to say, you know, you don't know if someone's just being kind or whatever. Um, but we kept in touch. And so a couple of years later, when I had the opportunity to organize a kind of guitar festival, it was called Guitar Legends in Seville, it was Cozy Powell that I called. And he came along, and it was a great choice because he inspired all those guitarists. It was not just about guitarists, it was about a whole rock experience. So we became very good friends after that. And when Freddie went, when we lost Freddie, I kind of plunged into solo work, foolishly thinking that I could sing, and um, went out on the road, and it was with Cozy. We did a lot of gigs in Europe and America and everywhere, and Cozy was just an amazingly supportive kind of person. You know, if you had any lack of confidence, he would give it back to you. He would give you back the energy. It's all right, Bob. We'll do it. It's great. It'll be hooligan. It'll be loud. You know? And he, he was always that ebullient kind of person who would give you the energy you need. Um, yeah, so in, in my mind, Cozy was a creator. He created that kind of music where the whole body is, is in drum. <coughs> and um, you see it everywhere now. You'll see it in Taylor Hawkins in the, in the Foo Fighters. Um, and the most, you know, Chad in, in Chili Peppers. These people who, who are hard hitters, but it's not just about uh, hitting hard, it's about some kind of magic which is generated when the whole body and soul and passion is in it. And Carl Palmer's here too. I'm not going to leave you out, Carl. Oh, no, yeah. you know, there's another magnificent example of, of people who created this genre. Um, well, to me, Cozy was a lot more than a drummer. And all I want to add is really, he was a great human being. He was kind, he was generous and compassionate to all men and all animals. One of my favorite memories of him is when he was telling stories about what happened when people wanted to come on his land. He would have the hunt, wanted to come on his land, and he'd be out there with his gun and he'd be like, get off my land! <laughs> you know, and they fucking did get off his land, I'll tell you. They did not stay. So Cozy was great, you know. Uh, he was born in Sirencester. Uh, he's a true son of, of, of this place, and I think it's wonderful that Sirencester is honouring him in this way. 
Um, so much more that you could say. The people that Cozy worked with are a catalogue of the world's greatest rock musicians, from Richie Blackmore to Tony Iommi, who's here, to Jeff Beck. Um, and did I mention he was a brilliant racing driver, brilliant uh, racing motorcyclist as well. Um, thank you all for being here to honour him, because he deserves it. He was one of the world's greats. And let him always be remembered here. Thank you.